Uh, welcome uh, to Parev TV. It is very exciting to see so many beautiful faces on the screen and they're all college graduates. One thing they have in common is they have been uh, members of the Shushi Dance Ensemble. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, let me start with Tamara. Congratulations, your master's degree. And uh, yeah. tell us how did the year end and how did the coronavirus uh, Effect. So the year came to an end quite abruptly. Um, it was definitely a transition to move classes to online, especially because a lot of our classes were very collaborative. So it was an adjustment. However, we we made that adjustment and we finished the year strong. Um, I think one of the biggest things that was affected was my clinical externship experience. I had previously been um, counseling both in, on an individual level and on a group level and to try to switch that to over the phone because not all of my clients had access to Wi-Fi um, was quite challenging but and it was an unfortunate end I didn't get to really say goodbye but I am very grateful that I was able to finish out my degree and I'm excited for how this is going to change uh, medicine and mental health care in the future. I will next uh, in September be attending Northeastern University as part of a post baccalaureate program to prepare for a career in healthcare. Uh, Lucine, uh, philosophy major, piano, tell us what it is life is like for you and what are you doing now? Well, I graduated from USC. I had to come home early from California. I finished my classes at home in New Jersey. Um, but I luckily uh, was able to get a job during this pandemic. I'm working for Bergen County Freeholder Tracy Zur, which is very exciting and it's it's great to be part of Bergen County and to see how things are going, especially because things are so crazy right now because of coronavirus. Um, so I'm working remotely and I'm looking forward to when things reopen so I can resume the normal duties of this position. Um, but I got very lucky, I have to say. I think eventually I will go back to school. I am the mm -hmm. type of person I, I, I never want to stop learning. So I think mm -hmm. I probably will go on to get a master's degree, um, but I'm just not sure in what yet. So that's why I wanted to work for a little while, um, for a maybe two years, and I can see what's out there and then I can make a decision about a master's degree. Ariana, thank you for joining us too. You're also a recent graduate from Muhlenberg University philosophy and neuroscience and all these big words. What is life for you and what are your future goals and aspirations? Yeah, um, life has been interesting just as it has been for all of us. Um, it was a little bit unusual to finish the year off, obviously, um, over the computer. The science stuff was great. My, my senior recital as a piano major was put on hold, so that was a little disappointing, but it's, it's all good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just feel lucky that um, I get to be with my family now, even though we had to finish school from home. Um, I am keeping busy teaching a class at TUMO, actually. So I, I was teaching a workshop on neuroscience to a class at TUMO um, Creative Institute in Yerevan, which was pretty cool. So that was a really great way to spend the time um, at home. My plan was to go to Yerevan and do an in-person workshop actually, but of course that's not going to happen. So um, we plan to continue online workshops because TUMO is online for the rest of the summer until September. David Antabian, I have seen you on stage a few years ago and I was mesmerized by your performance. It was a recital and uh, uh, your piano is just out of this world. You went to Tenafly High School Manhattan School of Music, graduate of West Point. I mean, this is really, I think the first, do we have any other Armenians graduating from West Point? There are uh, a couple of Armenians in the school in general, um, none in my class, uh, but I've tried to do my best to keep in touch with everybody who has at least some sort of Armenian blood, both, both as a support system and a, and a way to preserve our heritage. You know, West Point is the US Military Academy. It sounds so, impressive, you know, graduate of West Point. We should all stand up really and thank you for serving the country soon. But what is fascinating to me is that you have a job already in Oklahoma and then Alaska. Tell us how, how does it work? So um, where I go and what I do is based on the needs of the Army, but um, my specific role is as a field artillery officer. 
And what that means is that I'm in charge of a couple of really big guns that shoot very far. And I'm also in charge of the health and welfare of the people who operate those weapon systems. Um, I'm responsible for how they show up to work and how they go home back to their families. And um, if that means getting them to and from a deployment safe in one piece, then that is also part of my role. And so wherever that takes me, next year it's gonna be in Oklahoma, the year after that it's gonna be in Alaska, hopefully after that Hawaii, but we'll see. Um, that's kind of what I have to do. We, uh, we, have, we wish you all the best. I mean, this is really exciting things. And you are pursuing the music, I assume, the piano. It's still a favorite pastime. It is certainly a favorite pastime, but um, if you know anything about some of the musical accomplishments that people like Lucina and Ariana have done, uh, I am nowhere in their realm of, of expertise and passion for it. But since I put so much time into the piano in the past, um, it's something that I still use to give me some, some peace of mind. Alisa, you have a very unique uh, family, unique background from Holy Martyrs Armenian School to Camp Dubar, to ACYOAs, to activities in the Armenian community, and all the many degrees you got, and now you're a doctor, plastic surgeon. Uh, tell us, what does it feel like? You must be in heaven. I know your dad was in heaven. He says, oh, I see How does it feel? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's lingering outside my door right now, but um, <laughs> it feels surreal, I have to say. Um, and what a weird time to become a doctor, right? Um, so I have to say that, you know, there's, every, people love to say everything happens for a reason, and sometimes I believe it and sometimes I don't, but this is one of those cases where I think with everything going on in the world, it's made this experience that much more humbling, um, that much more meaningful. And, you know, I've always dreamt of being a plastic surgeon and I feel so lucky that I matched um, into plastic surgery residency. Um, it's a, truly a dream come true um, to, you know, for me, plastic surgery was the combination of medicine and creativity and just, you know, creating on the spot and using your hands in such a unique way. And the fact that I'm able to do that going forward is, is really awesome. And, you know, you asked everybody, how has this time made everything different? Um, I have to say that I feel really lucky to be part of a part of something like this. I do think that even though we're all physically disconnected, I've felt that during this time, the connection has almost been a bit more i feel like i've connected with people and with my community in a way that i wasn't doing previously just because you know we're all at home and seeking out these opportunities to share our experiences um so um i play this early string instrument called viola da gamba and so early music which actually ties in uh pretty strongly with early folk music as well and that kind of connects to Armenian tradition, um, has been a big part of my study at Yale. And I'm also a singer. So um, I've had the opportunity in a liberal arts context to perform quite a bit and um, study a, sort of a, a range of things that have to do with music or, or not, so. Christina, <laughs> what is the Rexman Prize? You were awarded the prize, what is it? It's, um, it's basically, it's awarded to two graduating seniors um, mm. who, the way they state it, it um, it's a prize awarded to people who exemplify the musical um, spirit of Quincy Porter. Um, but it's basically a, perf a, per a musical performance prize. There are a few uh, different prizes that go out to seniors who graduate and this is one of them. Beautiful, congratulations. You know, I know it's a lot of work, perseverance, dedication, commitment. Uh, so many years after, how many years after high school did you have to go to school? <laughs> Too many, it's 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> yeah, this year would have been my 10 year high school. What, 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 what does a person, what, kind of, one of, what characteristics do you need to have to pursue 10 years of studying? I mean, that's a lot of stuff. I think, um, I guess the way I've always described it is putting on, having the ability to put on the horse blinders, um, you know, 
putting all the distractions and all the background noise aside. Um, and every time there's doubt and every time, because the doubt does come up, right? You say, I've been in school for so long, you know, could I have been maximizing this time in a different way? And so it does come up, but it's having that ability to push past it and have confidence in your, in your, you know, knowledge and your ability and, and your strength to get through it. I think that's, that's how I got here. And, you know, in the end, I think it's a lot, has a lot to do with good mentorship, seeking it out and um, knowing who to find. I'm sure a lot of you here can speak to that. Um, and a lot of us probably wouldn't be where we are today without being, without having sought out proper mentorship. Um, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, let me ask you to raise your hand if you speak Armenian. How many of you speak Armenian? How many of you can read Armenian? <laughs> and how many of you have been to Armenia? Well, that's amazing. That's really, really amazing. Um, in the last couple of years, I've had an amazing privilege of meeting some pretty amazing people. Um, whether they consider themselves Armenian American or Armenian whatever. Um, I went to Birthright last year and I've been forcing myself to make an effort to uh, participate in some Armenian conferences and meetings around the East Coast that have allowed me to meet the kind of people that really gave me a lot of faith and hope that um, they're going to shake the house in a couple years. Uh, and it's something that I have been pretty cynical about before meeting some of these people. Some of them are in this call, by the way. And um, after understanding just how much we can do um, as a community and not without each other either, it's been pretty inspiring. Uh, Tamar, are we do doing the right thing and are we on the right track in maintaining that momentum? Uh, I, I think so. I mean, I have been lucky enough to be a part of uh, many different organizations and meet a lot of different great people, similar to how David was explaining that I have been exposed to a lot of uh, great mentors that are older than me and also have seen people that are younger than me that I think are destined to for greatness. And it is very inspiring to be surrounded by both accomplished and passionate Armenian young adults. And I think that these types of programs, similar to the Jerusalem trip that I went on, that was, you know, like-minded Armenians who were focused on learning more about their faith and their history um, from around the country. I think it was um, absolutely incredible to meet them and to learn from them. And I think that we are on the right track, um, gathering our youth together and finding commonalities. I think that inclusivity is essential to continuing that progress. And I am excited for the future and to see where everyone's going because so far it's been amazing. Well, when I was part of Shushi for a brief time and uh, I watched uh, from the audience when Tamad, my sister, was dancing a lot. Uh -huh. And I have to say, it was really lovely not only is it like a family? And it's such a wonderful social experience to have that kind of outlet to learn Armenian dances and also have so many Armenian friends that you know you'll see on the weekends. Um, but also to be able to participate in the culture. And, you know, it's so special to know, especially non Armenians, when they ask me, you know, what do you do in your free time? What are your extracurriculars? Having something like that is really very special. Um, and it's something that I think we all held close to our hearts um, because it is very different. Um, and it's also really fun. In general, what are your words toward parents, including your parents? What would you like to tell them? Number one, thank you. Um, and I mostly because you know, what I was saying before about, you know, staying focused and removing all the distractions, that's all because they instilled, you know, those values in me. Um, I'm thankful that they kept me involved in Armenian activities. Um, just like Lucien was saying, you know, having that be something I talked about on every single interview that I went on around the country. I, it, it was brought up in every single interview, whether, the, you know, the interviewer asked me about it or I brought it up willingly because 
it's who I am. It's everything that I am. It's what I care about the most is my community and my Armenian culture. Um, so it's, it's made me stand out. It's given me something outside of work, outside of school, outside of studying to be passionate about. And that's all from my parents. You know, I, if they didn't make these decisions, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't know any different. Um, now that I've been reflecting on graduating college, which is, feels huge to me after all these years, um, like, like as I was saying, putting everything aside, putting the blinders on and just focusing on what's important to you and, and what your path, um, what your ideal path looks like. It, it comes from my parents and, and letting me know that, okay, like you're on the path that you want to be, put the blinders on, keep focused, you're doing it. So I'm, I'm really thankful that no matter how far I strayed from that path throughout the years that they brought me back on to the right path. Um, in terms of the community, your question earlier was very interesting in terms of do we have enough things going on for our youth? Um, we have what you're doing right now for all of us to come together. We have Digin Seta having the dance group every week for us. We have people like Dr. Galine Bolosian at MSM who put David, Lucina and I in collaboration to, for years when we were at MSM. So you have people like this everywhere. It really depends on you taking the taking advantage of these opportunities to be Armenian. So we're, we're all Armenian by default, right? But I think we forget that you can use your personal interests um, and use Armenians out there to use your Armenianness um, in, in many, many ways. It's not just in one box of your life. It's, it really can come into all aspects of your life, which I, I think is very cool. And I think the biggest inspiration for me is not only the family that I grew up with, but the family that I know the history about. And I think for all of us, our family's histories, especially given that all that Armenians have gone through in the generations. I think it gives us strength and it gives our culture this sort of ready-made tenacity um, to go forward and be strong and do the best we can. Um, so I think, I think, I guess the stories of my families who I didn't know and the ones and the members of my family that I did know um, growing up would be the most inspiring. David, we have to wrap it up. You're going to make the closing remarks about this session we're having together and in general your thoughts about what's happening in the community and the youth who are looking forward for a bright future. Oh boy, all right. I think the most important thing to consider here since we're talking about who we're grateful for, etc., is that um, especially if you're a kid of an immigrant, is that um, the sacrifices that our parents made allowed us to take risks growing up. Um, invest in things like our ability to create art and culture and music and uh, pursue careers that don't turn a short-term profit. That's a great privilege and a great luxury that we have in our generation. And the ability to rely on family, friends, and other people in the community whom we never would have met in a million years if it wasn't for our parents, cousins, you know, son-in-laws, pet dogs, friend. And so um, these are things that we all have to not take for granted because in 10 years when we all leave college and we leave our communities and go our ways, um, if we don't make an effort to keep these networks and keep them thriving, we're gonna lose them. And that's gonna be a disadvantage to our kids. You know, I, I, all I can say is congratulations to all of you you are a very small sample of very, very healthy Armenian future generation. We're all looking forward to you're the future leaders of the community. And I hope we're doing what we can do and we are doing successfully because you all look very healthy, very confident, ready to take on the world. And uh, just go, go to, world, to the world. This has been a dress rehearsal for all of you. So far you have done nothing in the real life. This is a dress rehearsal and I hope you can prove me wrong and show what you can do and go and climb the highest mountain and fly the highest skies and make us all proud. Thank you very much and congratulations to all of you.